Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Angel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. For latest updates, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Mania. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So, let's begin. Sinusitis is the inflammation of the mucosal tissue lining of the paranasal sinuses. It's one of the most common health complications among individuals. To understand what sinusitis is, we must first have some knowledge of sinus anatomy. Paranasal sinuses are hollow cavities within the bones of the skull surrounding the nose and are lined by the soft and pink tissue called the mucous membrane. Humans have four pairs of sinuses located at either sides of the head. These are the paired maxillary the frontal, the ethmoid, and the sphenoid sinuses. Our cheekbones hold the maxillary sinus, which is the largest sinus of all. The lower center of our forehead is where our frontal sinus is located. Between our eyes are the ethmoidal sinuses, and in bones behind our nose are the sphenoidal sinuses. The mucous membrane of all these sinuses is lined by respiratory mucosa. The respiratory mucosa, at a closer view, is made up of pseudostratified columnar epithelium which continuously produces mucus. The secreted mucus keeps the inside of our nose moist which in turn helps protect against dust, allergens and pollutants. The cells are ciliated, which means they have cilia on their top. The cilia are always in a back and forth movement which help in dragging away the mucus produced by these cells out of the sinuses and drain them into the nasal cavity through the osteomatial complex. Let's take a cross section of this area and look at the osteomatial complex. The osteomatial complex is a network of small channels or holes which provide a pathway for ventilation and drainage of the sinuses into the nasal cavity. Gravity also plays an important role in the removal of secretions from these sinuses above to the nasal cavity below. Except for the maxillary sinus which is located much inferior to the osseal opening, Hence, gravity plays no important role in the removal of secretions from the maxillary sinus. And that's the reason health of mucosal tissue and the presence of cilia over these cells becomes even more important in the maxillary sinus for the removal of these secretions. Diseases of the sinus begin from blockage of the osteomatal complex that leads to disruption of normal drainage, decreasing ventilation and precipitating a disease process. Sinuses, just like other body surfaces, are filled with bacteria. With these bacteria already present within the sinus, changes as minor as a slight mucosal thickening in the osteomatal complex can lead to improper sinus drainage and accumulation of fluids within these sinuses. The fluid buildup within these sinuses provides a favorable environment for viral and bacterial growth, resulting in infection. Now let's look at the classification of sinusitis. Sinusitis can be acute or chronic. Acute sinusitis is defined as inflammation of the mucosal lining of the sinuses for less than 4 weeks duration. While chronic sinusitis is defined as recurring episodes of acute sinusitis or symptomatic sinus disease lasting longer than 12 weeks and can continue for months or even years. The most common cause of acute sinusitis is viral in origin. However, the main cause of chronic sinusitis is bacteria. Acute sinusitis usually occurs from a cold or allergies. Allergens such as pollen or pet dander may trigger an inflammatory response of the mucosa of the nose and sinuses, resulting in excess mucus production, sneezing and itching with nasal congestion.
The causes of chronic sinusitis are most often not obvious. Its causes can be hard to pin down and hard to treat. But risk factors include a recent upper respiratory viral infection, which is the most common cause, long-lasting allergies, a weak immune system, frequent colds, cigarette smoking, and adjacent odontogenic infections are also some other listed risk factors for chronic sinusitis. Structural deformities such as a deviated nasal septum could also be a cause of chronic sinusitis. Other causes include tumors or nasal polyps, especially at the osseous, which block drainage from these sinuses. Infrequently, a dystrophic calcification called an antrolith may also lead to chronic sinusitis. About 10 to 12 percent of cases of maxillary sinusitis are thought to arise from dental problems. Common causes of which include periapical or periodontal infection from the maxillary teeth, dental trauma or atherogenic causes such as dental extractions, maxillary osteotomies or placement of dental implants. In such cases, therapy requires resolution of the odontogenic pathosis in addition to management of the sinus infection. Now coming to the clinical features, the most commonly involved sinuses are the maxillary and the ethmoidal sinuses. Patients with acute sinusitis usually have cold-like symptoms like headache, fever, chills, cough, sore throat, rhinitis, facial pain and pressure on the affected area. Anorexia, photophobia and malaise with anterior or posterior nasal discharge are also observed. Maxillary sinusitis is associated with increased pain when the head is held upright and less discomfort when the patient lies down. On the contrary, chronic sinusitis is less diagnostic. Frequent complaints include facial pressure, pain or a sensation of obstruction. Majority of times, the symptoms are not so specific. These non-specific symptoms include headache, sore throat, lightheadedness or generalized fatigue. Radiographically, the involved sinus is cloudy with an increased radio opacity. Let's look at some important points which we need to remember while treating a patient with sinusitis. Since the roots of maxillary molars has a close connection with the maxillary sinus, hence most of the times maxillary sinusitis can be confused with a dental infection. That's why you may notice that most of the patients presenting with maxillary sinusitis complain of toothache. In such cases, close examination of periapical tissues by a radiograph and assessment of vitality of a tooth through clinical examinations becomes an integral part in ruling out a dental disease. A sinus infection should be strongly considered when patients complain of pain from more than a single tooth, presents with tenderness over one or both of the maxillary sinuses, exhibits nasal discharge, or have a nasal discharge accompanied by a foul odor, fever, and headache. The most common cause of acute sinusitis is viral in origin. That's why most cases are resolved within two weeks with or without medications. Treatment options for treating symptoms of acute sinusitis include moisturizing sprays, decongestants, mucolytics, corticosteroids, antibiotics or mechanical interventions like sinus puncture and lavage. Chronic sinusitis, on the contrary, is not so responsive to typical medical management. Antibiotics are usually given for a longer period, that's why it's often treated surgically by removing the obstructions of the sinuses. If you think this video was really helpful, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. If you have got any questions or suggestions, you may just write them down in the comment box below. Thank you for watching.